Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Talking to a church that's doing right, that's improved. Between the first Thessalonians and now the second epistle. Finally, brethren, pray for us. Though it's proper to ask others to pray for you. That the word of the Lord may have free course. No interruptions. Though so it's proper to pray for other people involved in ministries, that God will allow them open doors, and the word will prosper, and be glorified even as it is with you. So the word of God is being glorified in Thessalonica. And Paul says, as it's being glorified there, pray for us that it be glorified, that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. So, when all time is done, and everybody's judged, everybody's going to heaven, not according to 3, 2. There are some people who are faithless. And without faith, you can't please God. Hebrews 11. There are people who are unreasonable. You're going to deal with people, and no matter what you say, no matter what you quote, no matter what happens, they're not going to reason. And they're going to be wicked men. They're going to be men without faith. So here's three classifications of people you're going to deal with with the free course of the Word of God. When you read about the sower in Mark chapter 4, I mean, there, there's... Look at the grounds. Not very good fertile soil compared to all the soils. But the Lord is faithful. He's faithful. Man is not. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Uh, that's a kind of hard saying there. Because Christians do suffer. And if you live right and forsake your sins, evil comes from your sin. When you sin and you get the product or the reward or the sowing of that sin, that's evil. Uh, for an alcohol, if your liver becomes sick, your kidneys become sick, that's evil of alcohol. Cancer is an evil of tobacco. So if you stay away from your sins and do right, there will be no evil that follows you. But all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, evil comes. Even though 1 John 1, 9, we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, we still got to have that payment for our sins. But if you do right, you're not going to suffer for it. But all they that live godly in Jesus Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's not evil. That's a reward. That's the ability to get inherited into the millennium. But a cancer, a, a, a disease, that's evil. God can't use that. You're not going to get no gratification from the judgment seat of Christ, from God, from that. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you. That ye both do and will do the things which we command you. Again, it's obey God. How do you keep from evil? Obey God. Uh, verse 3 and 4 go right together. 
And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Again, there's a rapture. All three verses of this book, all four verses of the previous verse Thessalonians have something to do with looking for Jesus Christ. And God will direct not the head, not the mind, but your heart, what you believe. Romans 10, 9 and 8. 8 and 9. Where is the love? It's the love in the heart of God. That's a greater love that the world don't know. And then patient, waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, say people, in the name of the, our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother, say person, that walketh disorderly. There's a division among the church. Somebody's disorderly, you stay away from them. And not after the tradition which he received of us. And that was verse 15 in chapter 2. Somebody who's not doing what the Bible has ordered them to do, you are to get away from them. You're not to have any fellowship with them. Let them go. Paul said about that man committing fornication in, in the Corinthian church, I turn him over to Satan, let him go. And you know what? That man got right. When Demas is going to leave Paul, Paul did not go chasing after him. When Mark left the crew, okay, go Mark, see you later. And yet Mark later on got right and did right. You put it to prayer, you don't put it to following. You'll do more damage because the, the lesser amount, the lowest co common denominator is they won't improve, they'll ruin you. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us, Paul, the crew, those who are doing right. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. They're proper. You're supposed to be proper. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught. We, we earned the bread. But wrought with labor and travail night and day. Paul had a job. Paul worked the night shift. That we might not be chargeable to any of you. We're not going to lay our funds upon the church. We had to. We went and got a job to supply our needs. What we needed, you are unable. We made it up. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an sample unto you to follow up. Don't go into the ministry for the money. You may have to get a job. You may be a pastor that has to work. You may be someone who's in a public ministry. You got to work. You got to do something. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any work, not, if any would not work, neither should he employment. You got to do something. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. They're not working. So they're disorderly keepers. Working not at all, but are busy buddies. They're, they got their minds in other people's business. They're not keeping busy with their hands. They're not laboring. Their mind is wandering. They're causing sin. They're causing trouble. They're not having anything to do with the Lord. Now them that are such, we command and exhort you by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Keep your mouth quiet, go to work, earn your, earn your groceries, and enjoy it. But ye brethren, do not weary in well-doing. You know, you got to get a job, you got to work, don't let that worry you. Don't let that be a burden upon you. You just do. Keep serving the Lord. Keep on doing what you need to do. And don't let it bring you down. Don't let it drag you out. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Separation, even amongst brethren, of your church if they're not doing right get away from them you fellowship with them you encourage them you don't cause them to be shamed you're losing the reward you're not obeying 
this epistle. You are violating the Bible. Yet count him not as an enemy. He's, he's not wicked. He's not the enemy. But admonish him as a brother. Help him. Throw him uh, scriptures in the mail. Cards. Pray for him. Now the Lord of peace himself. Peace. Well, wait a minute. You just got a guy here you can't have anything to do with. He's out of fellowship. He's not doing right. And there's conflict. And yet in that conflict there can be peace. And that peace comes by the fruit of the Spirit to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark and that man in Corinthians that fornication, they got right. And they served the Lord. You may do more damage by, oh, I'll just go hang out with them and all that. And that no, they may be thinking, hey, it's okay. I got these Christians coming over my house, and it must be good what I'm doing. It is an absolute sin that if you are involved in a sin and rebelling in the church house, that you can walk out of that church and go down to another church, and they receive you and, and let you in. That's a sin. You ought to be, you know what, I want to get right with God. The only way I'm going to get right with God to get back in the church is i got to confess this sin. And i got to repent of this sin. And i got to get right. Or I'm not right with God. Then you get peace. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand. Paul wrote the salutation. Which is a token in every epistle, so I write. So every time Paul closes a letter, Paul writes with his own his own hand. So anybody else could have written these epistles. But when it comes time to close in that letter, Paul says, here, give me the paper. Give me the ink. I close every letter in my own handwriting. So the grace of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And what we do now is we close Paul's epistles to the churches. Next book, Lord willing, we're going to see epistles to men. Now this is going to be another thing we're going to see with John. John writes the seven churches. Paul writes the seven churches. John writes to the elect lady, 2 John. He writes to Gainus in 3 John. Well, Paul is going to be writing to people too. If you want an interesting study, like I said before, take Adam and Noah. Take Paul and John. They're interesting people. 